Now we're going to do a uh, recon class. All right, then tomorrow, after our nice little six-mile road march, we're going to get into the recon PEs, okay? So, the first part of recon, all right? Uh, well, this isn't going to last nearly as long as ambush does. Why? Because the first half is literally identical, right? The security hall prior to the ORP and movement into the ORP, literally identical, okay? So there's no sense of beating a dead horse here and keeping us in here for another two hours, right? Talking about the stuff we already talked about, okay? So we're going to start from the ORP, okay? ORP's already been cleared, we've been in there, and we strong pointed, okay? Can everybody go with that? Okay. So, prepping MWE uh, is essentially the same thing, okay? Kind of how I briefed it before. But now the personnel that are going on, the uh, leader's recon of the objective, right? All of this is different now, okay? And the equipment needed for it is different as well. All right, so for our recon objective, we have three teams that are going to be going out on the objective. Okay, so we have our RNS team one, RNS team two, recon and surveillance. All right, RNS team two, and then your SNO team. So three teams there, right? Okay, so RNS team one, you can look up right there, consists of a squad leader and a rifleman. Okay, RNS team two consists of alpha team leader, alpha team grenadier. SNO team consists of Alpha Team Automatic Rifleman and Bravo Team Grenadier. Alright? I'll let you guys write that down for a second. What was the second team again, sir? RNS Team 2, okay, is the Alpha Team uh, Leader and the Alpha Team Grenadier. Thank you, sir. And yep. one? Uh, one is the Squad Leader, okay, and then Alpha Team Rifleman. And then we have our SNO team, consisting of the Alpha Team Automatic Rifleman and the Bravo Team Grenadier. All right, so those are our three teams now, right? That's where the priority goes to. Uh, well, that's the guys going up on the objective, okay? So what needs to happen in the ORP is we need to distribute the equipment, right? throughout the uh, team, so that way they all have the accurate stuff going forward up onto the objective, okay? So, both RNS teams are gonna get binos, right? Just makes sense, for a recon, you wanna have as much standoff as possible, right? So, they're gonna uh, take their binos with them, okay? Uh, they can request, or, yeah, they can request pass their teams, like I talked about earlier today. You actually might want that for a recon, especially if it goes into the night, right? Might be a good thing. All right, for your rest no team, they're gonna go ahead, they're gonna have uh, binos, they're gonna have uh, AT4 as well. All right? So, uh, all three teams will have radios as well. Okay, so Bravo team leader will be giving his radio up to the SNO team this time. All right, so remember an ambush, that didn't happen, right? An ambush, ambush Bravo team leader's radio goes with weak side security, right? Right. Now for a recon, SNO gets Bravo Team Leader's radio. Okay? Alright. So, that's some of the equipment they're going to need to go conduct uh, their recon. Alright? Now, what's going to happen is, once uh, MWE is prepped, alright, just kind of like what you guys went over today, the squad leader then has to issue out some five point contingency plans. Okay? One is going to go to the Bravo Team Leader to cover the time that he leaves them back at the ORP and goes and they go up and conduct the recon. Okay? One's going to go to the SNO team from the time that he leaves them in position, and RNS team one and RNS team two go and conduct the uh, recon. And then, if you want to, you can give a five point contingency plan to RNS team two as well. Okay? So, uh, Bravo team leader, if you're giving him a five point contingency plan, all right, it's going to sound something like this Hey, Bravo team leader, going. I'm going on the leader's recon of the objective. Others, others I'm taking you with me are myself. Uh, Alpha Team Rifleman, Alpha Team Leader, uh, Alpha Team Grenadier, Alpha Team Saw Gunner, and Bravo Team Grenadier. All right? All right? Time. Time I'm going to be gone, uh, we'll say approximately three hours. We'll say three hours. Okay? What to do if I'm not back in three hours? If I'm not back in three hours, I want you to try to reach me via FM. Okay? If you can't get me, I want you to try calling me every minute out of the minute for three minutes, let's say. All right? Uh, if you still can't get me, I want you to try calling SNL because SNO might have told me to stop, right? 
we'll get into that later, why they would tell them to stop and all that, but SNO might have told me to move, or I might not be able to answer my radio or have to turn it off for a split second because the situation dictated, okay? If you can't reach the SNO, try Alpha Team Leader. If you still can't get Alpha Team Leader, I want you to call up to a hot, uh, call up to hire, inform of the situation, and take further instructions from them, all right? So, special, or action on any contact. All right. Uh, Actually, in contact. We're moving up to the objective. We take contact. We're to break contact. We're back to the ORP, consolidate, reorganize, and decide on the course of action. If we are up on the uh, uh, objective, we're going to go ahead and execute the compromise plan, which we'll talk about at the end of the class. Okay? So, we'll execute the compromise plan. Now, special instructions to the Bravo team leader. One, readjust the perimeter while I'm gone. Make sure that the RTO is manned in the radio at all times. Make sure the 240 is manned at all times. Make sure everyone stays awake. Uh, I need a range card made up for the 240. I want a sector sketch made up for the uh, ORP, okay? I want the claymores put out, all right? I want my five point procedure plan disseminated to everybody, okay? So, that's quite a bit of stuff, right? A little bit different than ambush right there, okay? So, instead of the claymores going up on the objective, they're now staying back at the ORP, and the Bravo team is gonna set them up out there, right? He's making basically an extended fighting position, right? Kind of like a patrol base almost just with a small amount of guys tightening up and making it as secure as possible. Does that make sense so far? Okay, so that's the special instructions to the Bravo team. All right? All right, so then we got one for uh, our SNO team, okay? Hey, SNO, uh, we're going up on the objectives of our recon, all right? Others I'm taking with me, we got RNS team one, RNS team two, okay? Uh, time, time I'm gonna be gone. By this point, it's probably gonna be about two and a half hours. Okay, uh, what to do if I'm not back in two and a half hours, I want you to try to reach me on the radio. If you can't reach me, I want you to kind of listen for me because you're up on the objective. You might see me or hear me or something like that, okay? Try to get me again on the radio. If you can't get me, call out the team leaders. Maybe he knows what's going on. If you still can't get me, I want you to wait another five minutes. All right, maybe I come up on comms. If I don't, I want you to notify Bravo team leader, all right, through the RTO, and then let him call up to hire and uh, seek further guidance, okay? All right, action on enemy contact. Once again, if while uh, we're moving up to the objective, we take contact, we're to break contact back to you guys, uh, then break contact back to the release point, grab our rucks, and move back to the ORP, all right? If while we're actually up on the objective, we get compromised, we're simply going to execute the compromise plan, all right? All right, so there goes one for us to know, okay? And then for RNS Team 2, hey, RNS Team 2, we're about to split off and go do our recon of the objective, okay? <coughs> Time, time going to be gone, about two hours, 15 minutes. All right, what to do if I'm not back in charge 15 minutes? If I'm not back in charge 15 minutes, I want you guys to wait at the release point for me. All right, if I'm not back in five minutes, I want you to try to call me on the radio. You can't get me on the radio, all right? Call me every minute on the minute for three minutes. If you still can't get me, call back to Bravo Team Leader, notify him of the uh, situation, let him call up to hire and take further instructions from them. All right, action on enemy contact. If while we're up on the objective, we take contact, we'll simply execute the compromise plan, all right? While we're making our way to the objective, we take contact, just like I stated before, we're gonna go ahead, break contact back to the SNO position, back to the release point, back to the ORP, and start on the course of action from there, all right? Now, both, both teams will receive a set of, all three teams, excuse me, will receive a set of special instructions, all right? Everybody's to have pen and paper on them, right? They need to be drawing what's going on on the objective and draw what's on the objective, okay? So it's very important that when you're drawing what's on the objective, you actually draw what you see, not what you think you see, okay? So, and it needs to be in detail. So what I mean by that is, let's say there's a Constantina wire around the camp, right? Okay, how much of it, right? <coughs> double wire, trip, or double strand, triple strand, C wire, what, what are we working with here, right? Is there an entrance anywhere right there? How many buildings? What, what is that building made of, right? How many people? What are they wearing? What kind of weapon do they have? Not, if you can't just say, oh, I think it's an M4, say it is an M4, or just say rifle, black rifle. You understand what I'm saying? Write down exactly what you're seeing, all right? All right, so anyways, we issue out those five points, right? Once those five points are issued out, go ahead and get counted out by the Bravo team there, just like what you guys did today, right? Bravo team established that choke point, and you guys move out. As you guys move out, squad is going to go ahead and uh, team know that five points in effect at this time, right? And you guys are going to roll out towards the objective, okay? Now, about halfway towards the objective, you can stop the seals real quick, just to make sure you're not being followed, all right? Once you're satisfied with that, you're going to go ahead and pick up and continue moving towards your objective, all right? Same principles apply, same rules apply. 
you know, two to four hundred meters, depending on the visibility, that's how far out, you know, you're going to start looking for, uh, that's how far out your ORP is from the objective, right? So about halfway to your objective, you're going to start looking for a release point, right? The release point has the same characteristic as an ORP with the addition of an identifiable feature. It's kind of what we talked about earlier, right? Okay. So, once you find a uh, good release point, all right, I'm going to go ahead and halt the squad, okay? And you guys are going to go ahead and start setting up your... Uh, Rucksack plan for right there, okay? So, you're just gonna set it up as RNS1, RNS2, SNO. Simple enough, right? Any <coughs> questions on that? <coughs> okay, so you're gonna go ahead and start doing your rucksack. Again, one guy at a time, he's gonna put it down, right? Uh, frame down, cat eyes, if you have cat eyes on, facing towards the rear, okay? And the other guy's gonna pull security. Next guy's gonna go up, slowly put it down, while the other guy pulls security, and then you guys are gonna get back in formation, all right? All right. So, once that's uh, done, now we can start <coughs> creeping up towards the objective, right? So the way we're going to do that is very similar to how we did it for an ambush, okay? The squad and Alpha team leader are going to creep up and about 20 meters behind, the rest of the element's going to be following, okay? <coughs> once the squad and Alpha team leader see the objective, they're going to halt their element, and they're going to go ahead and start uh, observing that objective, okay? They're going to confirm, change, or abort that objective, all right? They're confirming, yes, this is my objective, everything's good changing it, all right? So they're probably going to change it on the ground because what you see from the air and what you see on the ground is slightly different, right? So you might have got some good uh, area of views of it, but then when you get on the ground and you look at the vantage point, you're like, you know what, that might not be the best spot. That looks better over there. Does that make sense? All right? So, or you're gonna abort it. Uh, same, same thing, if you run out of time, you're gonna abort it, all right? Or if it's supposed to be just a small camp and there's Again, 45,000 Abrams on there, you're like, all right, I'm not going to do this, okay? And you call up the higher let them know what's going on, all right? Additionally, from that location, both the Alpha team leader and the uh, squad leader are going to start looking for their vantage points, where they want to go to around the objective, okay? So look for one to two, three, however many you need to, to get around that objective effectively, okay? So, as you see here, for example, both sides have two vantage points that they determined they were going to go to, right? So RNS Team 1 on the right side there, they have their vantage point uh, 1 and then vantage point 2, and then RNS Team 2 has 1 and 2. That's just in this example. You can have 3, you can have 4. All depends on the objective, okay? So additionally, when they're in that location, they're going to start dividing the objective in half, all right, with a, with a limit of advance. So you see we have a limit of advance up top right there, right? That means neither team is going to go past that location. A lot of times that's a road or something like that, right? You're not going to cross the road, okay? But additionally, you're going to divide the objective in half like this, all right? So that way you, both teams know not to pass a certain building or point so they don't run into each other on the objective. Does that make sense? Okay, so you just kind of divide it up. All right, once you've done that, now they can go ahead and start really looking at that objective, right? Get those binos out and start looking at it. The reason why we have them up there before the rest of the element, right, is so if they can gather all the PIR from right there, see the entire objective perfectly and recon it from right there, they're going to, right? No need to risk any more lives bringing them up there. Let's just go ahead and get this information and roll out, right? If they can't, that's when everybody needs to start getting kicked out. You understand what I'm saying? All right, so we'll, let's just say they can't see all the stuff right there, okay? So what they're gonna do is, again, they're gonna look for a good spot for SNO. All right, your SNO is very, very important for recon, okay? They really need to have a relatively clear field of fire because they're gonna cover your ass on the compromise plan, okay? So you're gonna look for a good location for them. Uh, once you find that location, you're gonna go ahead and put them down, all right? You're gonna assign hard and soft targets to them, okay? So you have a soft, you have a 320, and you have an AT4, right? Hard targets go to the AT4, 320. Soft targets go to the soft. Soft targets could be what? People. Okay. What else? Light skinned vehicle. Light skinned vehicle, right? I mean, 556, I have no problem ripping through that. A hard target can be what? A building, up armored vehicle, something like that, right? It can be a hard target. So you're going to start assigning that. You'll tell the grenadier, hey, that's your first target, second target, third target, right? Saw gunner, hey. Here's your primary and alternate direction of fire right here. There's your primary target right there in case shit goes down. See what I'm saying? All right? So you're going to give them that information while you're up there. And then you're going to let them know, hey, your five point is in effect at this time. Okay? Then you're going to go ahead and look at uh, RNS Team 2, your alpha team, and say, okay, man, 
One more time. I have 728 right now. Make sure that's what your watch says. All right, you ready? We got two hours. I'll see you back here, right? Or however much time you dictated at that moment. <coughs> I got two hours. See you back here. And they're going to roll out, okay? Now, when they roll out, they're going to go out, and they're going to be big clover leaves, right? Much bigger than what you guys did today, okay? Because it's very, very important on a recon that you, you maximize the stealth, all right? And how quiet you are just moving through the woods, not thinking about where you're walking, not just walking blindly, right? Rolling your feet as you're walking, trying not to snap uh, sticks, things like that. You understand what I'm saying? So it's extremely important. Now, both teams move out to uh, their first vantage point. All right? Let's say they get there and there's no issues. So the squad leader, for example, in RNST1, he's going to have eyes on the objective. He's going to start drawing and writing what he's seeing on the objective, right? All right. Meanwhile, his rifleman is going to be pulling rear security for him. Okay? Once the squad leader feels like he's got all that information from that spot, he's going to rotate, if he has the time to do this, he'll rotate with the rifleman. Let the rifleman get eyes on for a minute, right? Because two sets of eyes are better than one. So let a rifleman get on top, or uh, get eyes on while the squad leader pulls rear security for a minute, okay? Once the squad leader and that team is done with their first vantage point, they can call up to SNO and say, hey, SNO, uh, this is RNS1 moving to vantage point two, all right? That's no can either say yay or nay to them. Yeah, you're clear to move or say no, don't move yet because right now there's some heavy movement. They might suspect you're there or whatever, right? They're watching your back, they're controlling your movement. That's what SNO does. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, so if SNO says, yeah, Roger, you're clear. And say, Roger that. You're going to pick up and you're going to move off the objective, all right, and overleaf up to your next vantage point. Now, during your movement, okay. Uh, SNO can call you up and say freeze, and that, what does freeze mean? Stop. Just stop moving, don't do anything, right? He can tell you to freeze, and you just gotta freeze. And he can say, okay, you're safe to move, or he's gonna tell you, get down, or whatever. That's what they're there for, okay? So, if he says you're clear to move, you keep moving. Now, same thing's gonna apply to RNS Team 2, okay? Both RNS teams are not gonna be moving at the exact same time, okay? It's just not gonna happen. But, so if we move in within, you know, a few minutes of each other most likely, okay? So when RNS Team 2 is ready to go, they'll call up, clear it through SNO, SNO will say you're good to go, and they're gonna move out, okay? Move to the next vantage point. And you're gonna continue doing this around the objective until you've reached your LOA, or you've gathered all your PIR off the objective, all right? Everyone know what PIR stands for? Priority intelligence requirements, okay? All right. So let's say RNS Team 1 now, thinks they got all their information, right? They're gonna go ahead, call up SNO, say, hey, we're moving off the objective back to the release point time now. RNS, say, roger that, no problem. So they're gonna pull off, again, real bold flanking maneuver, right? They're gonna come down, or close, excuse me, come back down to the release point, and they're gonna wait for RNS Team 2, all right? Once RNS Team 2 is done, and they call up and get it approved to move back down, they're gonna move down to the release point, okay? So, now we have two teams at the release point, right? So both those teams are gonna go ahead and start comparing their PIR and make sure there's no drastic differences in them, right? So one guy maybe found four buildings and two LMTVs while the other guy saw, you know, 13 F-16 fighter jets or something crazy, right? Like, okay, that's a lot different than what we were expecting, right? So if that happens, and they have the time to do it, they're gonna flip-flop sides, okay? So when they flip-flop sides, that means the squad leader is going to go over here where the alpha team leader was. Alpha team leader is going to go where the squad leader was, okay? The rifleman and grenadier are staying on the sides they were on. Why, why would we do that? Somebody. Because they know the routes, right? They know where they're going. Okay? All right, so they have the time. They're going to go ahead and repeat the process. Okay? And then once they think they got all the PIR, they're going to move back to the release point. Okay? Compare it one more time and say, yep, I think we're good to go on this one, right? So if they say they're good to go, you need to go ahead and get the rucksacks on. And the squad is going to go ahead and call uh, SNO and pull SNO off the objective. Okay? They're going to get back to the re uh, release point, put their rucks on. The squad is then going to call Bravo Team Leader, get the far recognition signal to them, right? Let them know they're in route back. And then they're going to move out to the ORP. Once they get close to the ORP, exchange near recognition signal, get counted into the ORP, and a couple things can happen here. If they were not compromised, you can consolidate all the PIR right there and make your three or four copies of it right there. You have 100% security 
why not, right? <clears throat> However, if you think you were compromised or you were compromised, then at that point, they need to start breaking down that ORP and being ready to move 1,000 meters of major terrain feature away. Okay? So, that right there really is the basics of a squad recon. Pretty simple, right? A little more, it seems like there's a little more moving pieces. It's actually much easier to do, but it's very time consuming and very difficult, okay? Uh, we'll go over the compromise plan here in just a second. Let me pull this one up so I can show you something else. All right, so down in the lower right hand corner, you see Objective Larson here, okay? This is probably more realistic as to how a recon is going to take place, okay? You can kind of see the routes, how they're moving, all right? So there's the release point, right? That guy's rolling out all around the objective, okay? So again, if you have two teams, you're going to go ahead and just divide it up and find your LOA so again, you guys don't run into each other, okay? So this is something, it's probably a little bit more of what it's going to look like for you on a map right there once you start drawing it out and all that good stuff, all right? All right, so your uh, compromise plan now. All right, so your compromise plan covers when you're actually up on the objective, right? It's going down, all teams are up there, okay? So what's going to happen is let's say uh, <coughs> RNS team one gets compromised, okay? And you get, you'll know you're compromised, all right? So there is such a thing as recon by fire. You guys heard that expression before, right? So you think, maybe you think something's going on out there, so let's just shoot out there and see if we get a response back, right? So if they shoot a couple bursts and they're not really that close to you, you know they actually don't see you. You're not being engaged, right? But if they're screaming at or whatever, and they're screaming, shooting, and it's snapping right past your head, branches are breaking stuff, you know, all right, well, this sucks. I'm, I'm compromised. That blows. So what do we got to do? Okay? What we're going to do is hopefully have first squad, if they can, they're going to try to return a little bit of fire, right? Okay. Then you're going to have our, uh, uh, while they're returning fire, we're going to try to get Alpha Team, RNS Team 2, out of there. Okay? Without trying to get them engaged. Does that make sense? All right, so they're going to break contact and move back to the release point. Now, your SNO, they're going to start rocking and shocking it on the objective, right? AT4 is going to fly through, you're probably missing, hit a tree. Uh, 320s are going up there, that saw is lighting it up, right? Taking the pressure off of RNS Team 1. So when that's happening, RNS Team 1 is going to be breaking contact back to the release point, okay? Once SNO has expended all their ammo right there that, in that initial volley of fire, they're picking up and they're rolling out to the release point, grabbing their stuff, they're all getting back to the RP and rolling out. Okay? That's the compromise plan. It's pretty simple, right? Okay. So, uh, let's see. When you guys are doing this, just like you heard me say earlier, salute format. Okay? You guys are going to be writing everything out in a salute format. All right, size, uh, activity, location, unit time, all that stuff, equipment. Okay? You'd be writing, that's the format that we wanted. Make sense? Okay? So, to reiterate, for the guys that are going up there, if you're actually in a graded position and you're going up there on the recon, right, you got a lot that can screw you over, okay? If you're the Bravo team leader and you're in the graded position, it should be the easiest day of your life, right? You're back in the ORP, kicking back, doing your thing. So, remember, if you're the Bravo team leader, we're going to go through it here in a minute with the dots, a little bit slower than, than we did with them with. But your job is to readjust that perimeter, right? Get those claymores out, get a sector sketch made, uh, get a range card for the 240 done up, all right? That, keep someone on the radio at all times. Um, you know, continue to prep men for movement afterwards and so on, okay? <coughs> Quite a bit of stuff he's still responsible for. And in a grading situation, he can be no good very easily if he doesn't do it the right way, okay? So, with recon, guys, what are your questions? We just saved, I'll give you one second, we saved an hour, easy, by starting from the ORP. Go ahead. Uh, so you were talking about the compromise plan. Um, so once the SNO team expends all their ammo, they, you said they, they run back um, to the... Release point. To the release point, thank you. Uh, so are they waiting for 
the other two teams, or are Every they grabbing? They're going to try to wait. Okay. Okay. You want to try to wait so that way you have accountability to your men, and then you're rolling out. But you know, if the situation's that bad, then I mean, I don't know. You do what you got to do. We're right. on survivor mode at that point. Right. If one team is compromised, does the other know to start breaking contact or moving? Yeah. So all this stuff. Point? Yes, all this stuff you will have briefed in your operations order. You're going to brief what your compromise plan is and all that stuff, right? So, and you guys have comms. So you're going to try to communicate saying, hey, RS1 is compromised. We're, you know, we need, we need support right now. And the squad leader should still be able to orchestrate that happening. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. But yes, you should know. So after they all break contact, they're all going to release point, then they would call us back to the ORP. Yes. And then we would train feature away. A thousand meters or a major train feature away, yes. All right, what else we got? What's up? You got questions? So when you, when you said you cut the objective in half. Yes. So you have RST1 going down one side and RST2 yeah. going down the other and then they meet. Yeah, so, all right. So if this is, uh, what to say, this square, or what should be a square, is the objective, right? Okay, so I'm going to look at an LOA on the far side of it, and then I'm going to want to divide it in half, like so. Okay, so that way, again, they know not to go past that point on both sides and not to go any further than that point. You guys got it? Okay, what other questions you got, guys? So the the no. squad leader is telling RNS team to their vantage points? No. Or are you letting them nope. that is, That's them. So when you're up there and you're looking at the objective before you actually go out and recon it, you're both going to kind of sit there and have a little power and like, yeah, I think I'm going to go right there. That looks like the spot I planned for. No, that's probably better. Hey, what do you think over here, boss? You know what I mean? But he's not going to dictate because the squadron is not on that side. He's not seeing what the alpha team would have seen. Okay? Yes? What's the TF stand for below the green location? Ah, train feature. Train feature. Yep. So, when, when you guys are drawing this out, all right, when you plan where your uh, recon is, all right, your board is going to look just like this. Okay? And we're going to expect you guys to be able to brief this, right? Or draw this and be able to brief it. But we want, see how it has lines next to everything? This is all color coded, and then you guys are going to personalize it, right? And you're also going to add the grid location of what terrain feature that objective is on. Okay? What else we got, guys? Nothing else there? How do you dictate what to do as what direction? That's all on your plan. You can do whatever you want. If you're the squad, you can say, hey, I'm going to the left side. Right. But you'll plan it out during the operation total, okay? All right, so let's get through this thing over here real quick. <coughs> okay, here we are, squad comp fire team wedge. Okay, so there's our security hall prior to the ORP, right? Mm -hmm. All right, conduct seals. We already talked about all that earlier today, right? You guys just did like five hours of PEs on it. Okay, pinpointing, right? While Bravo Team goes around and does his thing. All right, now Alpha Team goes around while Squad and Bravo Team uh, go over the same information. Okay. <coughs> So, I'm going to run over that. All right, get you guys into. Uh, all right. So, we got them into long haul now. All right, squad leader just spot check it to make sure it meets his intent. He's happy with it. All right, bring the group in, right, for the leader's recon of the ORP. Who's going on the leader's recon of the ORP? So we have a squad leader, alpha team leader, alpha rifleman, and Bravo saw, right? All right, we got through that one. Okay. So they're prepping MWE, getting the five points, right? All right, Bravo team is creating that choke point. Count them out. 
tells them it's five pointers in effect, and they're going to roll out. Okay, there's the characteristics we talked about, right, for your uh, ORP. Okay, if it's limited visibility, you go back to back. Okay. And then we're going to clear, right? So you're going to clear from the 6 to the 3, from the 3 to the 9, 9 to the 12, 12 back down to the 6. Some of you will see a technique that goes from the 6 to the 12, 12 to the 3, 3 to the 9, back down to the 6. Still covers the same thing. So it's not a big deal. But this is the easiest way to do it right here. All right, and who's conducting the recon inside the ORP? Alpha team leader. Alpha, Alpha team leader. Alpha Alpha there we go. All right. Okay, once that's done, five point right. Who's staying behind? Alpha team leader. Alpha team leader. All right, and Bravo team saw gunner, right? Yep. Okay. Okay, so. They call it up at the far recognition signal as they start making their way back. They're going to get ready to exchange a near recognition signal, right? All right. Visual, good visibility, IR flashes, and uh, limited visibility. Get counted in, and they're going to conduct sills. Okay, so once they conduct the sills, everyone's ready to roll out. Order movement Alpha, headquarters, Bravo. They call up Alpha team, give them the far recognition signal. That's the cue to go from the long haul posture to the short haul posture. Better walk the squad. On the ORP. Okay, so now they're face to face. Alpha team takes his guys, tells them where to go, then he brings in the gun team and the RTO into the center of the ORP. And then he moves out onto the line with uh, whichever member of his team doesn't have a partner right now. Alright, now Bravo team leader linked up with the squadlers. Squadlers orienting him to the uh, ORP. Let know this is 6 o'clock, there's a 12, 3, and a 9 o'clock. I want you to strong point from the 4 o'clock to the 8 o'clock position. Okay, and then we're going to conduct stills. No big deal. Alright, after stills complete, the gun team's going to get in place. Alright, leaders are going to go out and start spot checking their guys, uh, make sure they're good. Get them in the long haul posture, okay? Then you're gonna, excuse me, then you're gonna call upon the ops guide that your ORP is occupied, okay? Same thing you guys saw earlier right there, right? Okay, then they're gonna confirm the route, the distance and direction to the objective. Okay, now we're prepping all the MWE, right? So we have all those dudes, we already went through it, right? RNS Team 1, RNS Team 2, and the SNO Team. Okay? So, one thing I want to emphasize with, uh, with the recon is you guys have to camo up, okay? You can't just go up there without camo on. You need to have your helmets on, you got foliage inside your helmets, face is painted, gloves on, right? All nine yards because you're getting up close and personal on that objective, right? You want to remain as hidden as possible when you're going up to that objective, okay? So just don't, uh, don't shortchange it. Additionally, you might, depending on what time it is, you might need to have your nods on, right? Because if you're going to be out in the reconning into the night, you don't want to be messing around trying to click them on, okay? So if you have them on, no big deal. A lot of guys I've seen, they take a green sock, all right? They actually cover their nods and then stick the heart back behind like a waist or a helmet band or something just to prevent any glare from going on while they're up there conducting the recon. Then if nighttime comes, it's simple. Just pull the sock off, bam, pull them down, you're in business. Okay? Just something to think about there, but you will be camoed up. If you don't have gloves, you'll be camoed up your hands with a camo stick, all right? Get behind your ears, your neck, all right? Pull nine yards. You guys need to be camoed up, okay? Additionally, I'm going to emphasize, just like we talked about earlier today, with uh, prepping MWE, you will not go on the objective with anything clinking, right? So no saw drums, right? If your mags are clinking together, you're going to stuff cardboard down in between them. If you're water sloshing around, you're going to top off your canteens, okay? You want to try to be as quiet as humanly possible up there, okay? Any questions on that? Hey, no, sir. Mm -hmm. All right, so we gave out like 45 points, okay? 
and we're going to mo roll out, they're using a modified wedge right here, to move up to the objective. All right, duties and responsibilities of the Bravo team and the ORP, disseminate the five point, readjust the perimeter, and place claymores, all right? Ensure the RTO monitor ready at all time. Ensure security is maintained, continue to prep the NWE for movement, all right? Develop a range card. Um, ensure the 240 is manned at all times. Cross extra sketch and keep everyone awake. Everything we talked about just a few minutes ago, right? I'll give you guys a minute if you want to write that down. All right, we good, guys? Yeah. All right, I'm going to change the slide. Okay, here's an example of a sector sketch. Okay? So, what you see here, you got the position of everybody in the ORP, right? All right, now you notice how they have the arrows going there showing left and right limits. Okay? They also have the numbers there, that's the azimuth. You're going to give left and right limits for each guy with azimuth. You understand? Wow. Alright, then you're going to put them on this. You're also going to go ahead and you can even draw what weapon system it is that they have there. Okay? Whether it's a saw, okay? Uh, the 240, uh, well actually 240 really won't be on it because it moves. But uh, you're going to draw what weapon system it is, 203, whatever. All right, you got the claymores coming out right there. Shows the direction those are going out and what azimuth they're at, right? So you need to have all that information. Additionally, you can have the name of the soldier that's right here, whoever that is, okay? And then dead space, all right? What is dead space? Space, space, you space you, yeah, you just can't see it. You don't know what's there. Maybe there's a hill and you don't know what's on the other side. It's just dead space at that point, right? Okay, so uh, this, we got lines of elevation, all that good stuff. You're gonna, you're gonna try to make this as detailed as possible, okay? You got your North Seeking Arrow on there. You have some identifiable features on it. You know if there's a certain tree out there or whatever, okay? Well, that's gonna be your sector sketch. All right, so we're moving up to the release point, right? Same characteristics as an ORP with the, with the addition of an identifiable feature. All right, we're gonna knock out our rucksack plan. RNS team one, RNS team two, S and O. Easiest way to do it, right? All right. Yeah. All right. So, notice how up there we had the squadron and Alpha team are up ahead of everybody, right? Just like I said earlier. So you could try to do that because if you can get all the information from that position, you will. If not, you're going to look for a good spot for the SNO. Maybe the spot you're at is a good spot for the SNO, but if it's not, you're going to find a better spot for them. All right, so you're going to go ahead and uh, assign those hard and soft targets and sectors of fire to them, all right? 
Make sure that they uh, understand their five point. Okay. All right, so you're going to use your cloverleaf method. You're going to use maximum stealth. Use cover and concealment. Never parallel the objective. Use as much standoff as possible. That's why those binos are so important, all right? And it is important to really try to be as stealthy as possible, all right? And do the right thing. You know, don't just go walking up to the objective, all right? As you get closer, start crawling. Eventually, you're high crawling very, very slowly to get up there, okay? And that does pay off. Uh, don't mean to go into ranger school stories, but I firmly believe this is why I got to go for one thing and one thing only in Darby phase. I was a squad leader for a recon in Darby phase, okay? It was middle of November, it was sleeping on us, just hating life as much as possible, right? And I was nervous as all get out. I was just a PFC going to ranger school, okay? So what did I do? I low crawled for 300 meters, not even kidding. And I got up there and I started reconning it. My binos were all fogged up, looked terrible, right? I started drawing buildings thinking I was solid. All right, came up and stopped me halfway through my patrol. I was like, well, I just no go with that, right? He ended up giving me a go, all right? He asked to see my uh, sketch. I had buildings on there and everything, right? And I was like, yeah, I got this. We go up on the objective to see it. The LMTV's up there, you know what I mean? I was all jacked up, all right? But doing the right thing is what I'm getting at. I crawled and crawled and crawled, you know what I mean? But I don't think a lot of people would have necessarily in that situation because it was just miserable out, you know what I mean? But that did the right thing for me in ranger school, and it is the right answer to do. As you get up closer, you want to be crawling, trying to maintain that low silhouette and not being seen by the enemy. You guys understand what I'm saying? All right. All right, so now both the teams break out, RNS Team 1 and RNS Team 2. They move to the first vantage points, right? Okay, hang out there for a little while once they're done there. Again, this isn't going to happen at the exact same time. They're going to move to vantage points too. Once done there, they'll confirm with the SNO that it's safe to move. All right, and uh, they'll roll out. Now, if they need to abort, if they run out of time, they gather all the PIR or they hit their LOA or they compromise. All right, that would be reasons why they're going to pull off the objective and head back to the release point. Okay? Make sense? Any questions? Thank you, sir. All right. So once they're done, they're going to move back to the release point, compare the PIR, and again, if they need to, they're going to uh, flip-flop sides and do it again. If everything's good, they're going to call the uh, uh, SNO back. If the SNO doesn't respond, the squad leader has to actually go up there and grab the SNO and bring them back. So, there's that objective, right? That objective Larson again. Just blowing up, giving you an idea of what's going on, okay? Let's see how they labeled the buildings, one, two, three, four, they labeled everything, all right? And on the left-hand side, they actually annotated what it is, okay? You guys want to be striving to try to do something kind of like this, all right? It shows the route that they took, what the terrain feature was on that route, all right? Where the release point was, where their vantage points were, all right? Uh, and see the little triangles, those are the vantage points, right? And showing you the angle that they saw right there, okay? And how much of what they saw and whatnot. Make sense to you guys? Uh, Alright, and I'm going to come back. Get the rucksacks. Oh, do sales, excuse me. And get the rucksacks on, one at a time, phone security. All right, call the Bravo team with the far recognition signal. <clears throat> so with the BTL be getting, if they didn't place play martyrs, they'd be, would they be taking them down? This, this so that's going to that's gonna be up to you. Who asked that? Okay, so it's going to be up to you guys, okay? So if you guys were not compromised, you have the choice. You, you can break down right then. All right, or you can compare and uh, consolidate the PIR right there if you feel safe enough. If not, so yeah, you're going to call, get them up in the short hop posture, have them break down the claymores, and get ready to move once you guys get there. Okay? Any other questions on that? I'm 
Okay, salute. All right, this image. So the RCO is going to consolidate the PIR using salute format. He's going to make three copies, all right, on car using carbon paper, hopefully, okay? Why is he making three copies? One's going to go to the squad leader, right? One is going to alpha team leader, absolutely. And what? Uh, one stays with the RTO, RTO, okay? But those are all the people that get them, okay? You can even make more. So one, when the squad leader tasks out the RTO, hey, I want, I want three copies of PIR made up, team attachment standard. If he doesn't meet it, he can make the RTO make one for every single person in the squad, right? Doesn't matter. He can make four copies. He can have one, two, the squad leader, RTO, alpha team, and bravo team leader, whatever he wants. Three is just an example, right? But why do we want to make that many copies? So either every guy has in case one guy goes down, multiple copies. So, okay, so there's multiple copies, yeah, but so when we do our link up, right, the main thing with the link up is when you link up with the link up commander, which you'll get into later on, you're sending a couple guys back if the whole squad doesn't make it back at once. Does that make sense? So without going into link up class, once you get there, you'll say, hey, I'm going to leave these two guys with you while I go get the rest of my squad. If we don't make it back in time, can you ensure these two guys get back to the camp, right? Because if they get back, they have the PIR, their mission is still complete. Make sense? Okay? So that's why you want to have it. Even if the whole squad gets out, but one dude survives and he's got the PIR and gets it back to the commander, technically the mission is was complete, right? They might have all died, it sucks, but they still completed the mission. Does that make sense? All right. Okay. So, let's see. All right. You spot check the applicant. All right. Squad leader spot checks and send information. No big deal. So, you're going to call up uh, RTO. Or RTO, excuse me. You're going to call up uh, to hire. Let them know, uh, you know, in the secure move, you know, mission complete, moving back to uh, link up right now. That's all it's really going to come down to. Okay? So, any questions on that? Maybe. All right, and that's Amber. <coughs> or excuse me, Recon. I'm all jacked up. That's Recon. All right, pretty easy, right? All right, any questions on Recon, guys? I know you'll have them tomorrow, but if there's anything you can think of now, I'll gladly answer it for you. No? Yes? Who's on the different teams? Or okay. Different? So we have the three teams, right? We have our RNS team one, RNS team two, and your SO team. RNS team one, you can see, it's right here, it's my small piece, that consists of a squad leader and a rifleman, okay? RNS team two consists of the alpha team leader and alpha team grenadier. SNO consists of alpha team saw gunner and bravo team grenadier. Yes? So with SNO, you wanted to send an AT-4, was there anything else? Okay, so SNO has AT-4, they got a grenadier, they have bravo team leader's radio, Right? They have binos. And then obviously uh, pen and paper. Pen, paper, pencil. If you have any special equipment such as past 13s, obviously those guys are going to take past 13s up with And what else, guys? Okay. Any qu you have a question? No. Okay. Any questions about today, what you learned today? I know you guys are tired, but I want to make sure you, we have your, your questions answered. All right. If you have no questions, stand by for a minute. All right. We'll get you out of here.